I'm on my way to the Noosa Tuesday World Champs and I hear there's a special guest coming. So we're gonna go straight for the jugular here. We're headed towards the main dropping section of this ride, close to the halfway mark in the famous Noosa Tuesday World Champs, a loop that according to Strava is 24 kilometers in length, although that's the far section only. Now, I should note this ride is famous because Noosa is one of Australia's hotspot tourist destinations. Beaches, rivers, national parks, it's got it all, and it's only 90 minutes north from Australia's third largest city at 2.5 million population being Brisbane. So we get many big names on our little bit famous World Champs ride here in Noosa. And on the screen from left to right, you can see the course, cadence, speed, watts as average three second power, watts as average 30 second power, and the gradient. Once again, like we were back in January 2020, we're joined by one of Australia's most well-known pro cyclists, the little sprinter from Team Lotto Sadal, or now Lotto DSTNY team, Caleb Ewan, who has ties to Noosa via his in-laws, or so I believe, and was here a couple of years ago on the old Saturday fast bunch ride down the coast, where Caleb tore my legs off going up a different climb heading into Coolum. I'll link to that video at the end of this one if you want to check it out. However, this ride, which was technically on the 20th of December 2022, I was up for redemption, my friends. That's right, my fat ass was not going to get dropped this time around, or so I hoped. This climb we're hitting is called the Corkscrew, and according to Strava, it's only 300 meters in length at 6% gradient and roughly a 30 second all out effort, although, Whoever created this segment definitely cut off some length either side, which as a bloke seems a little bit counterintuitive. So as far as I'm concerned, it's more like a one minute effort, which is just long enough to hurt quite a few. And to be honest, I was a little bit nervous about getting dropped as moments earlier, I've been sucked into the excitement of Caleb Ewan being in town, trying to keep up with him on the rolling turns which commence on the Noosa Karoi Road after exiting the magnificent Gindia Close Road climb which is taken, I'd say at a moderate pace as a warm up into this leg ripping section which is essentially fast turns on mostly flat terrain with a decent little rise at the end before heading into the first landmark being Karoi. In fact, just coming out of Karoi, I fell back into the bunch right towards the end to see how many riders we had left after this first section. I know we started the ride with, I'd say, roughly 35 to 45 riders, and counting the remnants here at this early stage, Caleb had ripped off at least a third of the bunch's legs. There's less than 20 riders left here. Basically, there were snapped off legs all over Noosa Kuroi Road on the 20th of December. 2022. As we get back to the corkscrew here, the other bit of self-doubt I personally had as the legs were starting to scream was literally a week ago from this leg tearing moment, I looked like Tom Hanks from Philadelphia. That's right, my beautiful nine-year-old Ruby had passed on to me school sores or a staph infection. And even my eyes were looking pretty dodgy as I rolled into the start line. So being full of antibiotics, still looking like Tom and having many leg tears in my legs from the new Sakuroi Road section, I wasn't confident at this point, to be honest. But as you can see, Caleb holds a consistent rhythm here. Last time I was attempting to hold his wheel up a climb, the watts were more extreme and typically, on this ride, people will attack at a thousand watts plus, but Caleb is not doing that. And I'm bloody glad because I may not have been able to hold his wheel here. And thankfully, no one was game enough to come around him. But what none of us realized was Caleb was biding his time for the real leg tearing moment, which is about to commence. I'm now fast forwarding to a nasty section on the Noosa World Champs ride called Sometimes, this life can get rough. You get knocked down, but you gotta get up. Keep going. 
I'd have been called the sunny side up on Strava. And I PR'd this segment on this particular day. Moments prior, there were many little lumps on dead roads inflicting more micro tears into everyone's legs. And this 2.1 kilometer climb at a average gradient of 2.4% is extremely deceiving, my friends. As you start the climb, you will see up ahead like a mirage. It's going to flatten out, but it doesn't. It falls flat for a bit, rises again, and then repeats the same mirage. It's arguably the most lethal dropping section on the World Champs ride, and Caleb was ready to take advantage. So I popped that here, as you can see, and Caleb is off. There's a gap quickly developing, and no one is game to jump across. And you can also see here, there's four riders between Caleb and I, and I believe one, maybe two, on my wheel so at this point in time the bunch has been disintegrated down to roughly a quarter of where it started knowing i had the gopro running and knowing you all saw me get popped last time i made an instinctive call to go for it i had angry anderson song in the back of my head playing i was going to get across to caleb's wheel no matter what and we were going to swap 800 watt turns into the finish line with a trail of fire left behind us on the sunrise road but as you can see my 5 to 600 watt effort quickly became a 2 to 300 watt effort and i faded so quickly because ultimately i was completely f***ed. you can see caleb look around as if to say what's wrong tom can't keep up again? That's right, once again, Caleb has dropped me off like a sack of crap, and I'm now pushing just over 200 watts, but it feels like 800. So looking through this footage in editing mode, Caleb dangled off the front for almost four minutes. We caught him just after the final decent drag, which often sees a few more get dropped. It's called Muster Muster, a solid one minute effort. And to be honest, I think we only caught Caleb because he was being a nice guy and sat up to lead us into the finish line. As we headed into the finish, Caleb ripped out a few more turns and I thought it would be cool if I could lead him out at the very end here. So I put in one big final effort as I thought how cool would it be to see Caleb rip past me to the red letter box, which is the official finish line at the top of the hill here, but he doesn't. It's a local rider that takes the chocolates and speaking to Caleb afterwards. But first up, I wanna put my hand up in the air and say, I have awareness things are starting to get a little bit creepy. Every time Caleb Ewan is in Noosa Town, I appear to be following him around with a little camera on a bike unbeknownst. So I'm putting my hand in the air and saying, yes, it is creepy. But at the end of the day, you wouldn't be clicking on this video if Caleb wasn't involved. So we gotta do creepy shit to get big clicks these days as cycling YouTubers. And I wanna thank Caleb because after the ride, I did ask him, do you mind if I put this ride on YouTube? And he said, yes. So thank you very much, Caleb. Caleb also said he didn't know where the finish line was. Otherwise, I'm pretty sure he would have ripped past everyone. So thanks again to Caleb for letting me film him like a creep and wishing him all the best for the 2023 season. Don't forget you know, to give the video a like if you've gotten value from it and I'll catch you in the next one. Sometimes this life can get rough. You get knocked down, but...